Hello, good morning. Today we'll discuss about the uh, diagnostic evaluation for the genetic neuropathy. I am Dr. Vipindra Shah, Clinical Fellow, Department of Neuroscience, Grand International Hospital. So what we are going to discuss today, the first objective is uh, when we are supposed to suspect the genetic neuropathies to someone present uh, to us with the feature of uh, neurological weakness. Now, what are the patterns of hereditary neuropathies? And what's the role of ultrasound, nor conduction velocity, nor biopsy in evaluation of hereditary neuropathies? And what is the role of genetic testing? So when to suspect the hereditary neuropathy? As a clinician, we have to suspect the hereditary neuropathy. Someone has the neurological weakness in early age. Second important clue is the positive family history because most of the hereditary neuropathies transmit to the offspring by different manner, like some transmit by autosomal dominant, some transmit by autosomal recessive, and some transmit by X-linked manner. So if there is any positive family history, then we have to think of the hereditary neuropathies. Though 30% of the hereditary neuropathy occurs because of the de novo mutation. The typical clinical feature of hereditary neuropathy is the patient will have the progressive distal symmetrical mus muscle weakness. So the patient has the distal muscle weakness, which is usually a symmetrical. And the patient usually present with maybe the foot drop or patient may have the frequent uh, ankle sprain because of the weakness. And it's usually a progressive one. And it is not a rapid progression. It's a very, very slowly progressive conditions. If there is the rapid progression of muscle weakness, then you have to think of other conditions like CADPs. Uh, but it is a progressive one. And if it is the asymmetrical one, sometimes like it may be confused with the motor neuron disease because the MND usually have the asymmetrical presentation. Similarly, presence of muscle atrophy usually suggest uh, the hereditary neuropathies and the feature like the uh, pace cavus, as you can see uh, here in this picture here, uh, in third picture, you can see that there is pace cavus and the hammer too, you can see in the fourth picture here, fourth picture. In the fourth picture here, you can see the hammer too here. This is the pace cavus here. And the claw hand, sometimes in the claw hand in the in the sixth picture. So if you see the patient, if the patient has the pace cabus, hammer toe, or the claw hand, then these point added to our uh, the diagnostic algorithm. Regarding the sensory symptoms, usually uh, they do not have the prominent uh, positive sensory symptoms like pain and the tingling sensation, but the patient might have the feature of the proprioceptions. They can fall because of the loss of proprioceptions. But before labeling someone as the patient with the genetic or hereditary neuropathies, we should always rule out the reversible, we should always rule out the treatable conditions like diabetes mellitus, vitamin B12 deficiency, infectious like leprosy in our part of the world, and different inflammatory, as this type of neuropathy can be can be caused by the vasculitis, and different autoimmune conditions. So we have to rule out these conditions. Only then, excluding this condition, then we can think of the hereditary neuropathies. As you know, the hereditary neuropathies are of different type. The number one. And the most common type is the Charcot-Marie Tooth disease. 
and this is a hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy here is motor and sensory neuropathy which has different variants from cmt1 to cmt7 and cmtx from cmt1 to cmt7 it has even the other subclasses like cmt1 a 1b 1c 1d like that there are so many variants of the shortcut marie tooth disease there are other hered hereditary neuropathies as well like HN, like hereditary sensory neuropathy and autonomic neuropathies. HSN, like hereditary sensory neuropathies, hereditary motor neuropathies, and small fiber neuropathies. But the common hereditary neuropathies is the hereditary motor sensory neuropathy, which is also called the Charcot Marie tooth disease. So let us see the frequency and the distribution of the hereditary neuropathies. You can see in this picture. The Charcot Marie disease type 1, CMT1, is 55%. CMT2 is 14%. And CMTX is the 7%. So, near about 70 to 75% case is CMT1, CMT2, and CMTX. Other variants of the CMTs are less common. If you see the genetic profile of there are those patients who are suffering from the charcot marie tooth disease. Now, after excluding the peripheral myelin protein that 22, that is PMP22, the other common mutation that occurs in the charcot marie disease are JGB1, MFN11, and MPZ. Why we need to know about this finding? Because when you are evaluating a patient with genetic neuropathies, then we have to see the mutation of these uh, mutations, the first. So the common CMT variants one is like uh, the uh, uh, the mutated gene is peripheral myelin protein 22. The duplication of which causes the CMT1A and the deletion of which causes the hereditary neuropathy with pressure palsy. Myelin protein 0, that is MPZ, cause the CMT1B. Gap junction protein beta, JGB1, cause CMTX. And mitochondrial fusion protein, mitofusion, cause CMT2A. So MFN, cause CMT2. Gap JGB, cause CMTX. And M PMP22, cause the CMT1A. And we, we all know that. If you sent the test for the PMP22 gap junction and mitochondrial fusion protein, we can detect the Charcot Marie disease in 70 to 75% of cases. Then, what's the role of the dot conduction studies when evaluating the Charcot Marie disease? First of all, if we do the dot conduction disease, studies properly, then we can differentiate the Charcot Marie disease from other cause of neuropathy classical one is CAGP. And we can even classify the hereditary neuropathies as well. So this, the vast picture is the normal normal one. This is the distal latency up to here. This is the distal latency. And you can see the amplitude. Uh, this is equal, uh, equal. In a patient with CIDP, what you can see is that there is increase in distal latency. And there is also decrease in the amplitude. Okay, this is called the conduction block. There is conduction block. You can see here there are like different magnitude amplitude, like diffuse. This is the temporal dispersion. So the conduction block and the temporal dispersion usually suggest the CADP. Because this CADP patient has the irregular demyelinations. Whereas in the patient with CMT, there, there, is the, there is the symmetrical demyelination. So there is no feature of the conduction block or temporal dispersion in a patient with CMT. That's why if you see the patient, a patient is having the conduction block and temporal dispersion, this reports favor the diagnosis of CIDP rather than CMT1A. Electrophysiologically, we can classify CMT into three types. One is demyelinating CMT1A, where the conduction velocity is less than 38 milliseconds. The axonal variant, their conduction velocity is more than 38 milliseconds. And in intermediate one, this 25 to 45. 
Okay. So, nor biopsy is it required while diagnosing a patient with hereditary neuropathies? Usually, we do not do the nor biopsy in a patient with genetic neuropathies, but if we are still suspecting the non hereditary neuropathies, like CADP, amyloid neuropathy, and lymphoma neuropathy, and which are easily treatable conditions, then we may have to do the nor biopsy. Where in the nor biopsy, you can, in a patient with CADP, you can see the onion pattern here. You can see here onion skin here. And there is no macrophage invasion. This onion skin is, is also seen in the CIDP patient, but there is macrophage invasion in a patient with CIDP. So that's how we can differentiate the no biopsy of the CIDP patient from the Charcot Marie to disease. The role of ultrasound in CMD is that if you do the ultrasound, then definitely we can see the thickened fascicles, thickened fascicles over here, thickened nerves and fascicles here. Though the thickened fascicles, we can see even in a patient with CIDP. Okay, so it is not only like the thickened, we see the thickened nerve only in a patient with CMT. If we, if we do the C, uh, ultrasound in a patient with CMT, then it's usually we get that condition in CMT1 and it differentiates from other variants of the Charcot Marie II disease. Then the, what the next? We have not conduction studies, we have no biopsies, we have ultrasound, but there is no test that can confirm the whether it is a CMT or not. And for that, what do you need to do? You need to do the genetic testing. And there are two ways of doing genetic testing. One is Sanger sequencing, which detect the some mutated genes. So another one is the second generation sequencing, or called next generation sequencing. We can detect the various uh, and multiple mutated genes. So the algorithm for the diagnostic evaluation of the CMT is we have to take the proper history. And if if you are thinking of the CMT and CMT1A, if it's a demyelinating pattern, then we have to do the PMP22. If it's the axonal pattern, then we have to do the MPZ. If it's the axling pattern, then we have to do the JGV first. It can reduce the cost of the patient. And if you still you are in doubt, we are in doubt, then we can send for the NGS uh, next generation panel, which can detect the different mutated then simultaneously. That is hard we can do to diagnose the hereditary neuropathies. So the take home message from today's presentation is genetic neuropathies, the usual presentation are it's usually symmetrical, distal, slowly progressive motor sensory neuropathies. The positive symptoms are minimal and the patient may have the feature of the loss of proprioceptions. If you see the pace cavus and the hammer tools and the claw hand, then definitely it add, it gives some clue towards the diagnosis of hereditary neuropathies. And if you get any patient, suspected patient with hereditary neuropathies, we have to do the electrophysiological test with the initial investigation. To confirm the diagnostic test, most of the time we do the genetic testing. This is how we can diagnose the patient with hereditary neuropathy. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind attention.